Hey everyone, welcome back to the Blue Cube YouTube channel. Today, we're diving into something super useful, the motion editor in Adobe Animate. It's one of those tools that can really speed up your workflow, helping you quickly change an object's position, rotation, and other properties over time. First things first, before we can even get to the motion editor, we need to set up a motion tween. Let's start with a simple shape. I'm grabbing the rectangle tool and holding down the shift key to make a perfect square. Then, using the free transform tool, I'll just change its color from the fill section here. As you know from our previous videos, to animate any shape, we first have to turn it into a symbol. So, with the shape selected, I'll either hit F8 on my keyboard or just right click and choose convert to symbol. For now, let's keep the symbol type as a movie clip and hit OK. Now, over here in the timeline, I'm going to click on frame 60 and choose insert frame. See how that creates a bunch of frames? Next, I'll right click on those frames and select create motion tween. You'll notice the frames change color, that's how you know you're ready to add some motion. Using the same free transform tool, I'm going to hold down shift again to make sure my movement is perfectly straight, and I'll just drag the shape forward. Because we created that motion tween, the path of the movement is automatically drawn for us, just like we talked about before. And just like that, we've got a super simple animation. Okay, so how do we get into the motion editor? It's easy. Just double click on those frames we just created. You'll see the editor pop up. To close it, just double click again. Another way to get there is to right click on the frames and choose Refine Motion Tween. Once it's open, you'll see this graph related to location. It's showing up because we changed the shape's position from left to right. We can expand and collapse the X axis for horizontal movement and the Y axis for vertical movement. I know it might look a little complicated right away, but I promise, it's pretty straightforward. The x-axis shows the horizontal motion. Since our movement was a simple horizontal drag, you'll see a slope on the graph. The y-axis, on the other hand, is completely flat, a straight line. Why? Because we didn't move the shape up or down. So, there are no keyframes or movement on the y-axis, only on the x-axis. Down here at the bottom, there's an option called Add Anchor Point. You can use this to add new points to your graph. When you click it, your cursor changes, and you can just click anywhere to add a new point, which also creates a keyframe. You can see that a keyframe is also created here. I'll press Ctrl plus Z to remove the points. Instead of this option, we can also use Insert Keyframe. However, if we use add anchor point, a handle is created for that point, which allows us to change the shape of the graph and the speed of the motion. Now let's see what change was made. The steeper the slope of the graph, the faster the object's movement. In places where the slope is less steep, the shape moves more slowly, and with an increase in the slope, its speed increases again. To better see the motion path, I'll double click on the layer icon and change its color to black. Now you can see that where the speed is higher, steeper slope, the points are farther apart, and where the speed is lower, the points are closer together. When you play the animation, you'll see that it starts fast, slows down, and then speeds up again. There's also another option that, when clicked, fully zooms the graph into the timeline. There is also a trash can icon to delete the tween and its properties. For example, I can select and delete the X or Y axis. In this case, the entire motion editor is deleted. I'll press Ctrl plus Z to bring the graph back. There is also an option called Add Ease. If I select the X axis, I can use this option to change the movement speed. Clicking on it shows various modes. The None mode makes no changes to the speed. In Simple mode, if I select Fast, 
the graph takes on a shape where the speed increases, decreases, and then increases again. You can test and apply the other graph modes as well. Remember that the dashed graph shows the new graph you've selected, and when you play the animation, the new graph will be used. If I don't want to use it, I can select No Ease again to return the graph to its initial state. To delete a point or a keyframe, simply hold down the control key to change the mouse cursor and click on the keyframe to delete it. In the Ease section, I can also choose other modes like Stop and Start and Fast to change the graph. I'll play it again. I can also change the ease amount from the bottom. By increasing the value, a stop is created for the shape, and then it moves at high speed. I'll play it again. The reason for this stop is the flat line that is created in the graph. Apart from these, you can also use complex movements. For example, by selecting the bounce mode, the animation becomes much more complex, and the movement changes entirely. All of these items are editable, and you can change them using the handles. In the custom section, you can also create your own graph. Clicking anywhere creates a point, and you can use the handles to change the shape of the graph as you wish. When you play the animation, you'll see that the shape's movement follows the new graph. The shape first moves forward, then moves back slightly as the graph goes down, and then moves forward again. Be sure to work with this graph until you are completely proficient with it. You can also use this tool to zoom in on the timeline with your mouse and its scroll wheel or to move it. To add another property to the shape, I'll select the layer and, in the object section, choose color effect. By clicking on tint, I can select a desired color for the shape. Now the square's color will be red in the first frame and purple in the final frame. Now, if you look closely, a new property called Color Effect with a Tint Graph has been created in the timeline, which indicates the color change in a linear fashion. I can create a different color change by modifying this graph and creating points on the graph. To move the handles individually, I'll hold down the Alt key. When I press play, you'll notice that the speed of the color change is different. To return the graph to its previous state, I'll simply hold down the control key and click on the point to straighten it. I can also create a change for the Y axis in the last frame. By moving the square up, you can see that a change is also created on the y-axis. The reason the movement becomes curved is the curved state of the graph on the x-axis. If I return it to no ease mode, the graph becomes straight, and the shape's movement will be direct. Now, in the last frame, I'll add some rotation to the shape. You can see that the rotation option has also been added to the graph on the z-axis. The color of this graph is also purple. We can also copy graphs. If I make a change on the x-axis, I can right-click on the graph, select Copy, then right-click in the Rotation and Z-axis section, and select Paste to copy the graph exactly. This is only possible if we have created the graph manually. I can copy and paste this same graph for the y-axis as well. There's another option called Reverse. By right-clicking on the graph, you can select it to reverse the movement and make the shape move backward. To return the graph to its previous state, I'll hold the control key and click on it. 
This was everything you needed to know about the motion editor. If you practice these things well and become proficient with them, you can create more complex and professional animations. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so, and I would be grateful if you would like the video. Until the next video, goodbye for now.